In this scenario walkthrough, I'm going to use SDK to demonstrate that there's not really a dark side of the moon. People use that term a lot. They say, oh yeah, the dark side of the moon, referring to the side of the moon that we can't see, but it's not dark. That side of the moon absolutely gets sunlight, and I'm going to use SDK to show that and explain also why there's only one side of the moon that we're able to see from here on Earth. So all sides definitely get light, we just can't see that backside. And the reason that is, is because the moon orbits the Earth once every 27.3 days or so. And that's the moon going around its orbit around the Earth. But the moon also takes about 27 days to rotate once around its own axis. So it's rotating around its axis in the same amount of time that it's orbiting the Earth. So scientists call that a synchronous rotation. They're rotating at the same rate. And what that creates is an effect where from on Earth, we're only ever seeing the exact same side of the moon, that one face that we're kind of familiar with here with all these kind of dark marks and everything. That is the side of the moon that we're always able to see from here on Earth. So in SDK, I have two arrows or vectors shown here. One is pointing from the moon to the Earth, that's the green vector, and one is pointing to the sun. The one point to the sun shows the source of its light, so it's getting light. If the side of the moon that has this sun arrow is the side getting light, the side of the moon that has this green arrow is the side that the Earth is able to see. As I play my scenario, you can see that that green arrow is always on the same face of the moon, but the yellow arrow travels around the moon, so all surfaces of the moon are actually getting light from the sun during this time. And this is one month of time shown um, during September of 2020. You can also see in my 2D window here, which is a projection of the moon onto a 2D surface, that there's a little target there that represents this line, this arrow to the Earth. And it moves around, let me go back to the beginning, it moves around a little bit um, because of the different orbital planes and some of the motion there. But for the most part, it's always kind of centered right in that one face that we're able to see from the Earth. So I can see that using the different visualization tools in SDK and the vectors. And I'm also able to see the lighting of the moon here um, because SDK shadows the side of the moon that's actually in darkness. But there's a couple of other tools in SDK that I can use to see this and explain this even better and do additional analysis. One of them is called coverage. In coverage, I'm actually gridding up points all along the surface of the moon and doing analysis to those points. So I can actually turn on coverage and from all these different grid points say, which of these grid points is able to see the Earth during the month of September? So all of the parts of the moon that are lit up bright blue, they're the ones that can see the Earth. So this is the face that we're able to see, basically, at any given time during the month of September. We can see surfaces lit up in blue. And this is not just from Earth, but specifically it's from AGI's headquarters in Exxon, Pennsylvania, that we're able to see these surfaces. It might be slightly different from different parts of the Earth. Then the projection here in 2D, I'm able to see those same blue spots lit up. So again, as I animate, you're able to see that rotation and that that moon to earth line is centered within that kind of blue side of the moon, which is the side we see. I'm now going to turn on a volumetric analysis, which is a similar type of analysis where I've gridded up the region of space right around the moon. In this case, though, instead of just calculating what points can be seen by the earth, I'm calculating which points are kind of seen by the sun using a calculation called solar intensity. So solar intensity when it's zero, that means a point is in darkness. And when it's 100, it means that point is in direct sunlight. It can be between zero and 100, kind of in the moments between darkness and sunlight as you're transitioning. So I have the moon colored right now where the yellow sides are in sunlight. So they're 100 solar intensity. And then the blue points are in darkness. So they have a solar intensity of zero. And I'm overlaying that on top of my simple coverage of the bright blue points that can see the Earth. As I animate through time, you can see that the bright blue points that can see the Earth start off in sunlight, but then they move, and some of those start to go into the darkness. So this kind of proves that this backside of the moon that's lit up not bright blue here, the side that we call the dark side and can never see, well, 
right now it's in sunlight. So it very much gets sunlight and we should probably stop calling it the dark side of the moon and maybe just call it the side of the moon that we're not able to see. And one last kind of fun fact that I'm going to show you using SDK is that there are a handful of people who have seen this backside of the moon and those are the Apollo astronauts. So during many of the Apollo missions, they flew around the back of the moon either on their way back to Earth or as they entered into lunar orbit to then make a landing on the moon. So there's a few humans that have actually gotten to see that kind of far side of the moon. The kind of interesting part about that is while the astronauts are traveling in orbit on that back side, the moon is directly between them and Earth and they actually aren't able to communicate with the Earth during that time. So it's always kind of a nervous time in a mission when the astronauts aren't able to communicate with Earth. So because of that, we would never want to land on the backside of the moon for a space mission because we wouldn't be able to communicate back with Earth. And that's already kind of a nervous thing for just a s orbit. And it would be very, you know, not ideal for a longer science mission. So all of the Apollo landing spots are actually here on the face of the moon that we're able to see from Earth. So I've marked them all here in SDK. And I imagine for any future science missions that we do at the moon, we'll also probably land on this face that we're able to see from Earth just so that we can do communications. Or what we've also kind of talked about in the world of space missions is creating constellations of satellites around the moon so that we can create communication relays between kind of the backside of the moon and Earth. But without those communication relays, if you're on this other surface, you're not going to be able to communicate back with Earth. So hopefully that helps to explain why there's not a dark side of the moon.